Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States and Mrs. Reagan, accompanied by Ambassador and Mrs. Price. Ladies and gentlemen, it's a distinct privilege and a great honor to have President and Mrs. Reagan with us at Winfield House once again. This is Mrs. Reagan's fifth trip to London and the President's third, and we've been uh, happily the host uh, for her on uh, three occasions and to host them as a couple on two. And I can tell you that that is simply a very rewarding and happy experience for us. Of course, one of the nice things about having the President and Mrs. Reagan with us is some of the added convenience that goes with it. For example, it's very much easier to get to Heathrow Airport in one of these helicopters. <laughs> well, Mr. President, I think I'm safe in saying that uh, this is probably the last time the Reagans and the Prices will appear together at Winfield House at least officially. No matter, I think, how much we wish it were not true, the Constitution clearly states that you're limited to two terms. And although the Constitution is silent with respect to ambassadors, I have kind of an uneasy feeling <laughs> that maybe Carol and I won't make it to the third term either. Mr. President, this is not the place to reiterate all of the many accomplishments of your administration, but I would certainly be remiss if I didn't mention how proud we all are to have served you and our nation over the past seven years. For Carol and for me, and indeed every member of our family, it has enriched our lives in countless ways. We are proud to have been a part of the administration that has rebuilt our defense, restored our sense of national spirit, reduced inflation, created 17 million new jobs, and is now into the longest sustained economic recovery in our post-war history. But we are especially proud, Mr. President, of the INF agreement in which you just exchanged ratification documents with Mr. Gorbachev and the Soviet Union. You have set the stage for profound implications that will follow throughout history in any arms control or reduction negotiations that continue to take place. Few presidents have accomplished so much. Few have been so popular with the American people. Few could look back over seven and a half years and claim that they had delivered so much of what they had promised. Mr. President, you've done all these things and you enjoy such popularity because you're a sincere man who has stood by his principles. And I'm proud, as I'm sure everyone is here, to have stood with you. Ladies and gentlemen, the President of the United States.
Well, now I'm a little embarrassed to come up here after all those wonderful things were said about me, as I happen to think that we have a very wonderful ambassador and his wife here representing the United States in, in this nation. And I also happen to have had the chance to observe and know what a wonderful staff there is in this embassy also. But the reason it makes it a little difficult is because I know how much we upset the routine when we drop in. <laughs> Nancy and I want to thank Ambassador Price, his lovely lady, and the, all the members of the embassy staff for your extraordinary efforts to assure the success of this visit, as you have done so before. This, as you've been told, is my third visit to London and probably my last as president. And I know how much time and hard work must be devoted to a presidential visit. I also know that a visit like this is an exceptional one, one that takes you away from your day-to-day -day business. And let me express my deep appreciation for the work you do to represent United States interests in the United Kingdom. I know you spend long hours working to secure our foreign policy objectives, to strengthen our economy, to enhance our national security, and to protect United States citizens overseas. And I know that many times when you have been called upon for some individual citizen to make to overcome something that is upsetting them at the time when they're far away from home and here in this land. Your work here in London has proven invaluable in ensuring that the special relationship we enjoy with Great Britain continues to bear fruit. Nancy and I wish to, to thank you, all the men and women of the embassy, not just the American employees, but also the Foreign Service nationals, without whose hard work and support this visit and the execution of our foreign policy would not be possible. And Charlie, I just, there are no words to express the appreciation that we have. You have a, a great staff, and now it's coming time for me to say so long I have to tell you, though, I want to tell you one little incident that occurred recently in my meeting with the General Secretary over there, and knowing, of course, that officially uh, their nation is atheist, and uh, we know that ours is based on the Judeo-Christian religion, and I couldn't resist one day. I told him that I was looking forward to having prepared the greatest gourmet dinner that anyone could ever think of, the most wonderful and delicious foods, and, and having him to that dinner. And then when the dinner was over, I was going to ask him if he believed there was a cook. <laughs> well, God bless all of you, and on behalf of Nancy and myself, now we've got to take the walk down to the to the helicopter, and uh, we'll be on our way home, but we'll be on our way home with the warmest of memories and feeling of gratitude to all of you. Thank you. God bless you.
Thank <laughs> you. 